This is the story of New Zealand Bird Rescue Charitable Trust. Hello, I'm Alice Worsley and I've been part of the team for a couple of years now and I'd love you to join me to see the work that Bird Rescue does with BirdLife and how you can become involved. The New Zealand Bird Rescue Charitable Trust's Green Bay Hospital in Auckland supports the community by assisting many thousands of sick, orphaned, injured and lost birds every year. As the motto says, on mended wings we set you free. Birds that come into care here are rehabilitated until they're ready for release back into the wild. They accept and care for all New Zealand birds. No bird is ever turned away. Many have been victims of cat attacks, road accidents, pollution, fishing line entanglements and human ignorance or cruelty. The welfare and well-being of all birds is paramount. On arrival at the hospital, they're assessed and treated, then cared for and rehabilitated until they're ready for release. Birds can remain in care for as little as a few hours or, in some cases, many months. When a bird has a serious injury, it's taken to pet doctors in Mount Albert to be checked and treated by our veterinarian, Berend Westero, who has a special interest in treating birds. New Zealand's beautiful ruru or moorpork are regulars with broken wings or more serious head and spinal injuries after being hit by cars. Each spring and with much dedication volunteers help to raise hundreds of orphans of all species who have fallen from their nests like this little kereru, New Zealand's native pigeon that arrived when it was very young. Visitors include the Korora or little blue penguin, Kereru or New Zealand pigeon, Ruru or Mopok, Tauho or Silver Eye, and Kotari or Kingfisher, along with Matuku Moana or White Faced Heron, Kauruhi Ruhi or Pied Shag, Ducks, Lost Budgies, and many types of caged birds. New Zealand Bird Rescue is run by a board of trustees. Lynn MacDonald, QSM, is the Green Bay Hospital Manager. She received her Queen Service Medal in 2010 for over 30 years of dedication to the care of birds and animal welfare. Lynn has a group of dedicated helpers who generously give their free time. However, they're always on the lookout for more volunteers. New Zealand Bird Rescue is independent from other organisations and rely on volunteer help, donations and sponsorship, without which they couldn't operate. Sometimes more unusual visitors arrive, like this kookaburra from Waitakere, or this parara or broad-billed prion that was washed up on Bethel's beach after a storm. Before any bird is released back into the wild, it must be in excellent physical condition and demonstrate it has the necessary skills to survive. After release, sometimes birds stay close by, returning to the top of the aviary for the food that is left out for them. We call this a soft release. Then, after time, they learn to adapt to the wild and no longer need the supplementary food. Owners who have lost a bird should actively seek to recover it. A pet bird can add a lot of joy to a family and we always take care to place our lost cage birds in a suitable home. Rehoming lost birds is a difficult job for a number of reasons. Our website birdrescue.org.nz has more information about finding a lost bird or adopting a bird needing a home. Rescue any bird that is in distress and can be caught. To catch a bird, move quietly and quickly, approaching the bird from behind or corner it and throw a towel or jacket over it. This prevents the bird's feathers from damage and protects you from its sharp claws and beak as you pick it up. Always remember never to put yourself or the bird at risk. It is critical to keep sick or injured birds warm by placing a heated wheat bag, hot water bottle or a plastic bottle filled with hot tap water in the bottom of a box or laundry basket and cover it with folded towels or paper towels.
Then put the bird gently in the box and close the lid or put a cover over it and place it in a hot water cupboard or somewhere quiet. Take it as quickly as possible to your nearest bird rescue centre as immediate treatment increases a bird's chance of survival. Botulism is caused by a buildup of toxins in ponds, lakes and waterways affecting many different birds. It has a paralytic effect on birds' muscles so they're unable to hold their heads up leading to certain death if left untreated. During the summer months many birds become very sick with botulism and need to be taken to a rescue centre immediately for treatment. Bread and other food and waterways create water conditions that lead to botulism. Please feed birds on grassed areas beside waterways rather than in the water itself. Wetting the bread first is a good idea or birds will sometimes carry dry bread to the water to feed. During autumn and winter, New Zealand Bird Rescue receives many birds like this fantail found ensnared by the killer putapata or bird catcher tree. It's an attractive subtropical but deadly flowering tree in the Bougainvillea family. There are two varieties, one has large glossy dark green leaves and the other is variegated with extremely marbled creamy white edges. Some garden centres sell these trees as ornamental, garden or house plants, often without warnings of the dangers it may cause. As soon as a bird touches the elongated sticky seed pods, they're stuck. The more they struggle to get free, the more they get entangled, suffering an horrific, painful and slow death, either by starvation, predation or due to the stress of the rescue process it endures. If you find a bird stuck in a parapara tree, please remove it from the tree by cutting the branches around the bird, not the bird's feathers. Don't attempt to clean the bird or remove the pods as you could hurt the bird and damage its feathers. This is a very stressful process for the bird. Never pull out or cut the bird's feathers and never wash it with water, soap, detergent or chemicals. It's critical to keep injured birds warm and follow the instructions earlier in this video on rescuing a bird. Then take it as quickly as possible to your nearest bird rescue centre. For more information, please refer to the video on the parapara or bird catcher tree. Bird watching is a great pastime for both young and old alike and an excellent way to interest and educate children about wildlife. You can turn your garden into a wildlife haven by planting native trees and flowering shrubs to provide a natural source of berries, seeds, nectar and insects for a host of different birds. In New Zealand, continuous feeding all year round is not necessary. Please remember food is also available to them in the wild. With this in mind, try to avoid making birds dependent on you for their food supply. It is important to feed birds responsibly and safely to play a valuable role in helping your local birds in periods of natural food shortages. Provide a source of fresh water like a pond or bird bath, preferably near some overhanging trees, to allow the birds to escape if a predator approaches. Position your bird feeders or tables high in trees or on top of fence posts so cats can't reach them. Putting out supplements in the late afternoon allows birds to spend their day filling up on natural food sources first. Put out soft apples and other ripe fruits that have been cut in half through the middle. Fat or lard balls and food bar mixes are an excellent winter food and very easy to make. Attract different birds by offering a variety of different seed mixes to your bird feeders and tables. Birds love fresh water. Even a large shallow bowl placed on a tree stump will do. They don't seem to care. Hygiene is important too, so keep your feeders clean, especially during the warmer months. So, if you want to know more or get involved, check out our website, birdrescue.org.nz or follow Bird Rescue on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash nzbrct. And don't forget the motto, 
on Mended Wings, We Set You Free. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support.